What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I want to continue to examine 100 years of the greatest 150 black fighters of all times. And Curtis Anderson and myself took a look at Lloyd Marshall, who was born June 4th, 1914, Mason County, Georgia. He stood 5 foot 10 inches, weighed 155 and a half to 189 pounds. As an amateur, he had 212 wins. 17 losses. As a professional, he would have 64 wins, 24 losses, 4 draws, and 32 knockouts. Now, he was in a ring with Kent Overland, Sefrino Garcia, Teddy Uroth, and Lou Bullard. He would take on Eddie Booker and Charlie Burley, Archie Moore, and Izzard Charles, Anton Christophortis, Curtis the Hat Tick Man Shepard, Jake Lamata, Holman Williams, and Joey Maxim. Freddie Mills, Irish Bob Murphy, and Carl Bobo Olsen. You talk about fighters. This is why it's important to understand their resumes, but you also have to understand the time in which they came. What they had to go through just to get a fight. Just to hold their dignity. Whether or not it was their night. Lloyd Marshall would defeat Charlie Bill. He would defeat Freddie Mills. He would knock him out, in fact. He would defeat Jake Lamada and Curtis the Hatchet Man Shepard. He would defeat Teddy Roar and Kent Overland. He would defeat Archie Moore, as well as Ezra Charles. Lloyd Marshall was a hell of a fighter. He belongs on this list. 100 years. The greatest. 150 black fighters of all time. Shout out to Lloyd Marshall. Fantastic fighter. Fantastic fighter he was. Now I know we talked about Homan Williams. But we're going to talk about him again. I still don't think many understand what kind of fighter he was. Born January 30th, 1915 in Pensacola, Florida. Died July 15th, 1967. He stood five foot ten and a half inches and had a 71 inch reach. Understand his genetics. He was a colored welterweight and colored middleweight champion. He was managed by John Roxborough and Julian Black. Trained in Detroit, Michigan. He also trained at Grubbs Gym in Harlem, New York. Now, I mentioned John Roxborough and Julian Black. Those are the managers for Joe Lewis and why Homan Williams was important in the case of Joe Lewis. Because when Joe Lewis went to Detroit, there was a man in that gymnasium who was sitting around and he just finished training. His name was Homan Williams. And Joe Lewis was brought over to Holman Williams by Thurston McKinney, who was a friend of Joe Lewis. Holman Williams would train Joe Lewis and teach him things on a heavy bag. And those short inside combinations that Joe Lewis would throw, those were Holman Williams' combinations. Holman Williams had a total bout career of 189 fights. 146 wins, 36 knockouts, 31 losses. He was stopped three times, had 11 draws. How I remember this, I couldn't tell you. But he faced future middleweight champion, Marcel Sedan and Jake Lamato. And like I said, he was the colored welterweight champion. He took on Coco Kid nine times. Actually, he took him on 14 times and he lost to Coco Kid nine times. And he would take on Charlie Burley seven times. Charlie Burley would defeat Homan Williams for the colored middleweight championship of the world. Man, these guys were getting it in, I'll tell you. He's also in the ring with Burt Littell, Alan Little Tiger Wade, Lloyd Marshall, Eddie Booker, Herbert Lewis Hardwood, and Texas welterweight, light heavyweight, Jack Chase. They called him Black Dynamite. He was born in Texas in 1917 and he died in Washington in 1972. 
He's five foot eight inches and weighed 145 to 162 pounds. I'm speaking of Jack Chase. Jack Chase would become the California light heavyweight champion when he would defeat Watson Jones. And he would become the California middleweight champion when he defeated Eddie Booker. And Charlie Burley would become the California light heavyweight champion when he defeated Jack Chase. These men were just having these round robins and they couldn't get fights with mainstream champions, if you will. It was always not their night. They couldn't win that night. They had to throw fights. They would get cheated out of fights. But Holman Williams fought Tommy Paul. He fought from featherweight going all the way up. He would unfortunately die in the club that he was working in as he was sleeping. The club would catch on fire. What a way to go. But Holman Williams was a hell of a fighter. It's important that I mention him once again. Very underrated fighter was Holman Williams. I'm Scrapbook Boxing. Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. Thanks for listening. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Shout out to these great black fighters. We'll be naming many more to come right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. You're listening to Miles Davis. Oh, what a musician he was. Miles Davis with John Cho Coltrane. John Coltrane was something else. All right, thanks. See you in the next video.